Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith. We've returned to the shaded garden of Master Gardener Ron Job to ask him about the integrated pest management procedures that he employs to reduce his use of pesticides here in his garden. Is this part of your integrated pest management, Ron? Yes, Curtis, this is uh, my main insect getter here. This is Rosie, and she has some companions as she comes out and cleans my garden out pretty good with it. What's her favorite food here? Well, she's good on grasshoppers, uh, the, the small squash bugs, uh, aphids, uh, if they're low enough to the ground, and uh, a lot of other, uh, she doesn't discriminate. She, she'll eat almost any insect. I, I think she also likes some of your tomatoes every once in a while. That's very true. She takes her salary out. That's right. You In this organic business, you have to give a little, take a little, and, and make it come out right. I remember a few years ago you had turkeys, and they were a little more efficient because they'd even eat the big squash bugs. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I still put my turkeys out here, but I lost my real good one that uh, took a hold of that. But I also have some other uh, uh, means here to keep my pesticide use down. Um, I've got some bug lights. <clears throat> I see them hanging there, those ultraviolet lights with right. the electric zapper. Right. And uh, also, I, out here I have about four toads, and I have one that's about this big around. He's a large one. And I try to, uh, tr I try to maintain everything that I can to keep the plants healthy, keep the insect uh, population down. But when I'm pushed against the wall, then sometimes I have to revert to an insecticide. Okay, and uh, one of the principles of integrated pest management, or IPM, is to know the pests you need to deal with. What are the pests that are most common here in your garden? Well, as anybody's garden, uh, I think aphids is a, a real primary problem. <clears throat> and also, I got the tomato hornworm. We get grasshoppers, cabbage lopers, uh, any number of, um, of sucking insects. And so it's a constant job for these guys. You get a benefit from that in that you don't have to buy so much feed because they're finding their own food. And I've noticed you've got some eggs produced. Yes, they, they do pretty good with that. And this is a good setting hen, too. She raises some young ones for me every year. So there are a lot of benefits to this. And with the bug light, I know in the past I've seen that they've killed a lot of elm leaf beetle at night, and the chickens just love to come eat those beetles. They do, and the toads come out at night. I come out here at night when they're on, and the toads know where the seem to know where the bug lights are because when the bugs fall if they're partially paralyzed or whatever they they scoop them up pretty quick so your integrated pest management actually is a little bit of integrated farming yeah. the animals and the plants together for a synergistic effect that's right yeah it, it works for me now do you have years where it really does not you said sometimes you do have to go to the insecticide there are years where you just really get overwhelmed yeah if you have an infestation that, that can't be controlled same way like with aphids if you got the Ladybugs there, uh, they'll control them to an extent, but if it's a uh, epidemic, why they just, you know, it, it's kind of overwhelming for them. Yeah, I noticed one thing, they're not very discriminating. They're gonna eat a ladybug as well as they'll eat an aphid or a squash bug too, won't they? Yeah, that's true. But so, that's why I say you gotta weigh the good and the bad, and you gotta give a little and take a little. And that's why some people have a problem with the bug lights, because it's also indiscriminate. Right. They'll kill whatever comes by there, and the lace wings are one of our beneficials, which are very much attracted to the bug lights. So people need to be aware that there are the positive and the negative aspects here. That's very true, but I've never seen a praying mantis or a, a ladybug in, in, the, in the trays under the bug lights. I, I see a lot of moth mm -hmm. and um, it, flying insects in that area. So at least for your setting, and probably in a lot of situations, even though it kills some of the good guys, it's getting a lot more bad guys than good guys. That's it. Now, do you, does your integrated pest management procedure have anything to do to help you with your um, plant disease control? Well, I, yeah, I, it be, it, especially the, the plant diseases that are carried by the insects. It's yes. a definite control there. But the airborne, you know, and the soil-borne spores, well, I, I doubt if it does much for that. But uh, any, any little bit helps. We like to consider that in integrated pest management, we're also dealing with diseases and weeds. And I've seen them eating some of the weeds out here, so we know that they're also weed controllers. Oh, yes. Yeah, they even, they're even... Uh, in the Northwest, when I was in the Forest Service, they used weeder geese in their trees, and they're spatially adapted for that. But uh, these chickens do, they like the soft uh, blades of the grass that grows, and, and, and the uh, lamb's quarter, and other uh, palatable weeds. Yeah, once they get too big, but you've got to be careful that your vegetables aren't eaten by these guys, the, the little vegetables as they're first starting, while they're still tender, because they'll go after them too, won't they? Yeah, that's true, but what I, <clears throat> you have to kind of, 
get a control on things, especially once the tomatoes get ripe, because they, you lose some of them. But once I harvest my tomatoes, I put all my chickens, and I have about 15 of them, and I, and I just herd them through here like, a, like a, people should herd sheep. I run them back and forth, and that's why you hardly ever see a grasshopper in this garden. Okay, that's one of the big problems. Well, Ron, thank you. Integrated pest management is a good way to manage problems in the garden. That's definitely true.